Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Spotlight Ballerina and I'm going to be sipping on my peach ginger tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a Stretch Tin Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Burnt Umber, which I will call brown, Titanium White, Green Oxide, and Deep Yellow. And of course, you can switch those colors up as well if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I will be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well too. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and the chalk and all the other good stuff is in there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are black and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be doing about three quarters of my canvas just black, the top three quarters, and then the bottom quarter is gonna be a gray gradient for the surface that our dancer is sitting on. So I'm going to load my brush with some black paint and I'm gonna very, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark a quarter way up my canvas. So visually without using a ruler, what I can do is I can visually pick my halfway point which is somewhere around here and then I'm going to go about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas and that's about a quarter of the way doesn't have to be perfect but somewhere in that vicinity and then you can use your brush as a measuring tool just put your finger in that same spot and go over to the other side and make yourself a mark at about the same height they don't have to be perfect and then what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the entire upper three quarters of my canvas with black paint. So you could, in theory, probably use a canvas that is already toned with black to start this painting, but when you buy the canvases that are already black at the store or at your online art supply supplier, they are the, the um, canvas is primed black. It doesn't have a coat on it that is intended to be the final surface of the painting. So the primer, like I have a white primer on here, that surface is created to adhere the paint to it. It's not designed to be the final layer of the painting. So if you want a black a dark undertone to your painting, you can certainly use one of those black toned canvases to start, but you'll always want to put at least a protective layer on top of that, um, that black or just use another coat of paint because the acrylic paint is designed to have qualities that will make it archival or withstand UV. It's protected against 
um, liquids, it's water resistant and all that good stuff. So the acrylic paint is designed to be the final layer, whereas the, the primed canvas is not. So I just gave myself a nice good black coat throughout this area. I'm coming down to my quarter mark on my canvas. And when I get here, what I'm gonna do is I'm bringing it all the way down to there. And then the next time I go to pick up paint, past this line, I'm gonna be picking up white with my dirty brush. So I have white paint on my dirty brush, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give myself the edge of that surface that my ballerina is sitting on, and I'm going to get it to blend in a little bit with my black background. So just kind of going back and forth with a gentle pressure on my brush, and that's gonna get them to blend in nicely. And then as I come down this surface, what I will end up doing is I'm gonna pick up a little bit more black as I get towards the bottom of here. But right now, just kind of blending it in a little bit before I go any further. And now I'm gonna pick up black on my dirty brush. So this is gonna give me a nice gradient from the top of that surface where she's gonna be sitting to the bottom. And I'm not going all the way black down at the bottom because I do wanna have the evidence of a shadow behind her, which in order for me to do that, I can't go all the way black for the surface because my shadow is gonna have to be darker than this. So I am making it a little bit lighter than black down at the bottom. And then I'll just kind of keep going back and forth in through here so I can get a nice gradient just going up and down that area. And then we will be using our chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm gonna be drawing an outline for my ballerina. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any other writing utensil that you'd like, but I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So. We are gonna be doing a simple outline of the body, and then we'll put, <clears throat> excuse me, an outline of the tutu as well. We're not gonna be doing any fine-tuned details here. We're just gonna give ourselves some basic shapes so we have a place to paint from in a little while. So I'm gonna start with a oval shape for the head, and where I'm gonna place mine, I'm gonna have it a little bit higher than the center of my canvas. So if this is about the center of my canvas, top to bottom, and this is the center, <clears throat> excuse me, left to right, I'm gonna be about two inches or so above that is where I'm gonna put the bottom of my oval. I put a little extra chalk mark down here. And then my oval is gonna be about three inches high. So I'm gonna have my oval I would say about that high, and it's gonna be about two inches wide. So I'm gonna take these top and bottom markers, and then I'm just gonna connect them with an oval type of a shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna be, you know, disguising it with a bun on the top of her head and decorations for a, a fun hair accessory, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the upper portion of her body with her neck. So I'm going to come in from here just a little bit and give myself a couple of short lines in this direction. You want them to kind of blend in with that neck or with the head a little bit. So somewhere in through here, and they're only about a half of an inch, quarter of an inch to a half of an inch long. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers so I know how wide I want the shoulders to be. I'm gonna come down from these markers I would say about another inch, and then I'm gonna go out to the left and to the right. I am, if I was to go up from here, I'm about an inch, inch and a half to the right of the, the oval. So you want these definitely wider than the oval itself. And again, I'm down about an inch or so from here and out maybe about almost two, maybe an inch and a half out to the right and out to the left. So those are gonna be the tops of the shoulders where they round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect those with her neck muscle. My husband would 
really love it right now if I knew what the name of that muscle is, but I don't. <laughs> so we're going to call it just between the shoulders and the neck, the neck, the, I don't know, the upper muscle part and through there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna curve this up from here just a little bit in through here and then I'm gonna give it just a slight bump going up towards um, this neck in through here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. You don't have to do much and if you accidentally make it really, really big, what you can do is you can just take a brush with a touch of water on it and you can certainly just shave it down to whatever you feel will be working. And of course, when we paint on it, that will also make these lines look less dramatic. This is just chalk. We're, we're just getting ourselves a, a, a place to go from. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the outside of the arms down in a di soft diagonal line to, if you come straight down from this corner here, I'm at a little bit higher than my, um, my quarter way mark and I'm in from that just a little bit. So this is gonna be right about in through here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna come straight down from that corner and then I'm gonna go in maybe about a half of an inch somewhere in this vicinity in through here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these with a soft um, arcing type of a line. So right from here, this is gonna be my shoulder. I'm gonna come out just a little bit and then just bring it right back in something like that. Do the same thing over on this side, bring it out and bring it back in something like that. So we've just created the outside of the arms. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna give myself kind of the bottom part of her torso. So something like this and this, this is gonna make our way into the skirt. So once I've got that on in through there, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top part of the back of the skirt on. So I'm gonna just give myself a couple of ripples going in through here. This is going to give me the top of the back of the skirt. And now I'm just gonna make myself the exterior edge of the skirt. So this is gonna be big and full and ripply and have lots of movement to it. So I'm gonna just kinda of give myself some markers so I know how far I want it to go. So I'm gonna go pretty far out to the edges and I'm gonna bring it the farthest part about halfway down my floor area. So about halfway between here and here, I'm gonna come in maybe about half of an inch to an inch, give myself a marker, and then same thing over on this side. And they don't have to be even from one side to the other. That just gives you kind of a stopping point. And down at the bottom in the back, I'm gonna be about, I would say like an inch or so away from the bottom of my canvas, so somewhere in through there. On the left and the right, I'm gonna have my skirt coming out from a little bit above where her arm is. So somewhere in this vicinity is where it's going to come out. And same thing on this side. So just a little bit above where her, the bottom of her arm is. And then you just kind of connect all your dots with a whole bunch of ripples. So I'm gonna just kind of make a, a ton of little like marks that are just gonna kind of ripple and make their way down to all of these all of these dots that I have made. And I'm keeping mine kind of in a circular type of shape just to provide the um, information that it's got a lot of volume to it. We can certainly, as we go through the process, you can make it a little bit different as you're painting it, but as you're um, just kind of getting the information on here just to give yourself these little bits of ripples from the tutu. You can certainly just have some fun here. Maybe one side is up a little bit higher. This side over here, I can just get this to kind of come and ripple out over here. I'm going to get it to maybe come up in through this section, like maybe it's flipping up on the edges a little bit. And then of course, when we paint it in later, we can certainly have a whole bunch of fun with the edges and stuff. And then I think I'm gonna do one last outline thing, which is gonna be where the exterior portion of her headband is gonna go. So I'm just gonna give her what's gonna look like earmuffs at the moment. I'm gonna just kind of give her these cute little um, bumps on the sides of her head, a little bit higher than the bottom of the oval and just something like that. It doesn't have to be much, just something so we have a visual where we wanna go. And then we're gonna be using our small brush for the, or actually, let's use our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to paint the torso on our dancer. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using brown, black, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm really just going to be adding um, highlights, in a sense, of where I want the clothing to be and the highlights on her skin. So it looks like she's being illuminated by the spotlight on the other side, but we still want to be able to see some of her shape as well and her form. So that's where I'm going to give um, some identifying marks in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with brown paint on my brush. <coughs> Excuse me. This is going to allow me to almost kind of outline my areas that I want. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to outline her back. So we've already got it started in through here. What I'm in essence going to do is give her 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 side to her body in through here and then kind of her little armpits in through here and we'll put some clothing on uh, um, the back of her dress on. So I'm going to take my um, brown paint and about an inch or so down from my shoulder and in a little bit I'm going to bring myself this line that's going to come in through here maybe buckle out just a little bit for her back area and then bump out a little bit for where her um, the top of her rear end starts and then I'm just going to kind of get that to blend in a little bit in through here. I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So a little bit down from my shoulder and in just a little bit. You don't need to go in very far. I'm going to bring, this is going to be part of her back. This is going to be her um, like midsection in through here. And it doesn't have to bump very much. I'm just getting that to bump a little bit less and then a little bit of a bump for her where her rear end would start and then I'm just going to rub this and I'm just you can pull it in towards the black if you want to something like this so it's got a firmer or a more prominent line on the outside and then it just fades into the um, the darker area on the inside I'm going to do the same thing for her clothing so where we just made this dip in through here that's where I'm going to assume the top of her dress is so I'm just giving a line in through there. I'm going to give her two lines where um, the straps of her dress are going to be. So I'm going to put those in the dips of her shoulder muscles. So something like this. going to give just a brown line in through here. And then give another one in through here. Something like that. And I'm not really doing firm lines. I'm really kind of just giving this loose sketcherly type of um, line to it because I don't really need to do much to sell the story here. And then what I'm going to do, same thing with my brown, is I'm going to, in essence, kind of outline the exterior of her skin. And then once I've got that on there, we'll start to add little bits of um, highlights. So I don't need a lot of paint. What I'm really also doing is getting rid of my chalk mark right now. So I'm using this brown to get rid of my chalk mark. And it will probably still bleed, it'll bleed into your paint a little bit, which will help this exterior kind of highlight a little bit. And then I'm just kind of lightly dusting my brown with that chalk along this edge here and allowing it to come all the way down and meeting the um, meeting the bottom where I had it designated before. So I've just given myself a really faint kind of exterior line in through here. I'm going to do the same thing over on the right side with a little bit of my brown paint just kind of um, eliminating that chalk mark and blending it in a little bit with the um, with the black paint, bringing it all the way on this exterior edge in through here. And if the arm grows a little bit in the process, that is okay. So I'm just getting that to blend in a little bit, staying away from my first line that I had made. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to enhance some of these lines a little bit. So with the brown. I'm going to pick up a teeny bit of white paint. So I've got brown and a tiny, tiny bit of white paint. I don't need a lot at all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from these outside edges. I just add a little bit in through there and then just pull it into 
the main dark area itself. So I'm in essence kind of gradually adding these little bits of highlights. So I'm progressively getting lighter and lighter. And if you, and our lightest area is gonna be up at the top by those shoulders. If you felt that you wanted it to be brighter, you could certainly add a little bit more white to it. But what I would recommend do, doing is just going a little bit at a time. And again, I'm just using my, my brown with a touch of white on my brush right now. And you can see my hand keeps going through my chalk, so I keep getting little light areas. You can take a little bit of water and just eliminate that if that happens to you as well. But sometimes my hand gets too excited and starts going over areas that I didn't expect it to. And if you want more movement in the back of this to show that there's more form to her, you can just bring it in a little bit further. I'm going to also pick up some black paint to get the bottom of this of her um, of this area to not have that gradient in it. So I just picked up some black paint to make sure that this is just nice and dark as it's gonna meet that um, the skirt part in through there. And then I'm gonna go back into my brown and white and give myself little bits of highlights on my straps. So a little bit of my brown and my white, I can do it the lightest up at the top because that's where it's gonna catch the light the most. And then I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and just pull a little bit of this lightness down that strap. So I don't want it to be all the same color. I just want to add that little bit of a highlight, you know, towards the light. So again, picking up my brown and my white to elevate these highlights over on um, this little shoulder in through here. I'll put one in through here. These two areas are going to be the lightest on these shoulders because to me they would they would catch the most and I'm just kind of fading them down into the the darker area. So a little bit of light on these shoulders and fading it down and then maybe a touch of lightness in through here as well. And if you felt you wanted to do any more than that, if you wanted more brown to come into the back of the neck, you can certainly just keep picking up a little bit of brown, letting it fade into the darkness, which is her back. So you can really elevate that to be as bright or as dark as you want it. And if you went to light, you can always just add a bit of black back to the equation and just get it to, to blend in. And then you can fiddle with that all you want. We're gonna be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you get this done, you can take out your small brush, get rid of any little chalk marks that you might still have along the edges, and then um, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our head. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be doing very little detail I'm just, in essence, going to be kind of um, same thing that we did with the body, where we're just adding little bits of highlights to suggest the shape of the head, to suggest that the light is on the other side, and to give a little accessory on the head. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to get rid of my chalk line here. So I'm going to put some black paint on my brush. I could have done it with water, but I'm just going to do it with a little bit of black paint, get rid of that chalk mark in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I wipe my brush off on my paper towel, I'm going to be giving myself the information of where her face is. So all I really need to do is put a little bit of brown and white paint on my brush and I'm going to go right over my chalk mark right in through here. So I'm just going to give myself this little light on the other side of the um, head with a little bit of a curve to it that's going to suggest that these are her cheeks of sorts or her the bottom of her jaw that we're just kind of seeing on the other side from um that's being illuminated by whatever that spotlight is you can even put a tiny bit of white right on the edges of it just to give it that extra bit of brightness over on that side and then what i'm gonna do i wipe my brush off on my paper towel i'm going to be adding um brown black and white on my brush, all three colors on my brush. I'm gonna give the um, headband of sorts about halfway down her head. This is gonna connect these two fluffy things on the edges of her 
um, head. So I'm just going to give myself this curved line with different tones in it. So a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of white is going to give me the illusion of this head piece along the back, just giving myself some kind of um, the suggestion that she's wearing something around her head. So I've got that going on there. I'll put some extra little bits of sparkles on it in a little bit. And again, if you do it too bright, just bring back a little bit of the black that will help you to dull it down a bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top part of her head on. So I want her to look like she has a little bit of a bun for her hair. So I just put some brown and white on my brush. I'm gonna give I, I need my chalk mark to go away in essence um, by the time I'm done this. So I'm going to just go a little bit above that and give myself this partial bit of a circle that's going to just give myself the, again, the suggestion of a bun. I'm picking up brown and black right now to give myself um, just little streaks throughout here. I'm going to do the same thing with some black paint. I'm going to eliminate some of these chalk marks along the edge of her head up in through here. So this is black on my brush right now. And now I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and white in order to give myself the um, idea of the top of her head in through here, just with a little bit of highlight going on in through there. I'm going to do the same thing with these little guys in through here. So I'm going to be using black, brown, and white to start. I'm going to have these in um, this little fluffy type of appearance as if these are almost like little feather fluffy things on the side of her, um, her head decoration that she's wearing. So I'm doing it pretty dark right now with some black brown and white on my brush just to give me the um, kind of the footprint where I want it. I'm going to do really light stuff up at the top so I'm going to do these darker areas down at the bottom and and where it meets my chalk mark so I can kind of get that chalk mark to disappear and make this look like it is the back of this this um, decoration on her head. So again black, brown, and white but up the darker side of those and then as I get towards <clears throat> the top of it, these little pieces over here, I'm going to start using more white and brown. So I have white and brown on my brush right now. And I'm just giving these little flicks. Like these are just little pieces of um, feathers or some kind of soft material that is just kind of flitting out. Maybe maybe she has curly hair. Maybe these are little pieces of her hair that have been all nice and curled along the sides. And I'll put it lighter in a minute, but I'm progressively going towards my lightness so I can get this to look like it's got some dimension to it. I'm going to put a couple of little light lighter kind of flicks down at this bottom, maybe to indicate we've got some extra little pieces coming out in through here, maybe a couple down in through here. And now I've in essence kind of laid out the whole area that I want. I've concentrated on getting rid of the majority of my chalk marks. Now what I want to do is I want to illuminate it with the lightest versions of what I've done. So this is where I'm going to pull out a little bit of my yellow. So I'm going to take wash, first I'm going to wash my brush, make sure I don't have any black on there. So I wash my brush, I'm going to take some of my white and a tiny dot of yellow paint. So what this is going to do, it's going to create a very light version of my yellow, which will help to make this luminescent type appearance in these lighter areas. So this is a very light yellow that I've got on my brush right now. And I'm going to add bits of it up into the hair up above. So I don't want to cover up all of my hair, just kind of little bits here and there, maybe some on this, um, on the bun part, the part that might just be popping out just a little bit more than the rest. Maybe we've got a little, little section of it over in through here and maybe just a couple of little pieces in through there. I'll add a couple of little pieces flicking out of this pretty head decoration in through here. But again, I'm not overdoing it. I just want there to be that luminescent value in, in these areas. 
I will add um, some white too in a minute, but right now just getting, I'm progressively getting to my white. I like to do this kind of in stages. So it, again, it gives, provides that um, very pretty and natural type of appearance. I'm gonna put a little bit of this pale yellow down in through here, maybe a little bit on those edges. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm putting on a tiny bit of white paint the white is going to do a couple of different things. It's going to bring the brightest of the bright along the edges at the top to tell the story of the, the spotlight. And I'm also going to put a tiny bit back here to insinuate that this piece might be shiny back here. So I put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself just a couple of little marks on the back side of this um, piece in through here. Then I have that bright white. I'm going to give myself a couple of tiny little bits of it in through here, not as much as I did the yellow. This is gonna be um, the the brightest of the bright and it's not gonna, you don't wanna do as much as you have on that yellow. Maybe I got a couple of little tiny pieces just flicking out even further than the rest. Maybe I've got a couple pieces in through here and then I'll put some uh, on this side. I'll, maybe I'll put even more on this side in through here. And then once you've got that done, what I recommend you do is just sit and let it dry for a minute and then kind of assess the situation after it's fully dried and see if you want to add any more. You might find that you want yours to be fuller and have more more um, stringy pieces coming out the side. Maybe you want some little flyaway pieces here and there. So feel free to just kind of let it sit for a few minutes and if you want to add any more, feel free to do so. We're actually going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your head done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of our skirt and its shadow. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put my shadow in place first and then we'll put a, a nice translucent wavy motion kind of first layer onto the skirt and I'll show you how we'll do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start with some black paint on my large brush. And what I do is I'm gonna squish it kind of on the side of my palette so that way I have my bristles kind of in control. You don't need a lot of paint for this but I definitely know that this whole bottom section is gonna end up black so you can have a lot of paint, I guess, if you want to. I'm gonna have some, just the edges over here are gonna take on some sort of shape of the skirt itself. So I'm gonna, on this left-hand side, I'll come out from the bottom of my skirt and then just kind of make a couple of little ripply type of marks over here. I gotta move my canvas so I can get to the bottom of it, something like that, just to imply that that's maybe the edge of the skirt, something like that. And then I'm really just going to color in the whole bottom of the, the canvas with this black paint. And I'll do, uh, as I get towards the um, right hand side, I'll do again something similar to what I did over here with giving it a kind of a ripply edge to emulate the edge of the, the skirt itself. So just going up to my chalk mark, you can manipulate it and make it look any bit of different if you want to at this point. And then as I come over to this right hand side, maybe I just kind of scoot in some black paint underneath here. I see this has a little point to it. So maybe we'll give a little point coming off like that. And then maybe just bring this down in a little bit of a wavy line like that, and then just bring it down here. And now that I've got that on there, I'm not even gonna wash my brush because I want the back of the skirt to look darker than the front. And it's gonna be this white, like tweel type of material that's gonna be translucent and stuff. So I can have some darker areas in the back. And then as I work my way towards the front, it's gonna be lighter. I want this to have lots of movement. I want it to, in essence, kind of feel like it's billowing out from here, from the top, and then just kind of resting down here in all these different ripply kind of ways. So I'm gonna paint very, in a very messy fashion. I just have black paint on my brush right now. So I'm gonna put in some dark areas throughout this back section. 
So I'm, I'm really just kind of using like a dry brush technique to give myself some really dark areas. And then in a minute, I'm gonna be picking up some white paint without washing my brush. And I'm gonna progressively get lighter and lighter. So I've got that on there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white paint and you can mix it up a little bit in your, in your palette um, with that black on your brush. And now I'm just gonna start to kind of introduce some additional layers onto the back here. I'm gonna work my way towards the front and you can see I'm really just kind of using this in a messy type of fashion. I'm looking at getting the, um, the floor area covered with um, an additional layer of paint so I can have it looking like the skirt and not like the floor. And now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and white so as, without washing my brush. So as I work my way towards the front of the skirt, I'm gonna be getting some lighter areas. So as I, as I do this, I am, you can kind of see evidently by the way I'm moving my brush, I'm working it in a kind of a directional fashion. When I did the back, I was kind of working it in this way. As I'm going towards the front, I'm giving it more of, um, these gestural type of directional rubbings that I'm doing. I'm not painting it in 100%. I'm really still just kind of using a dry brush approach to get some of these colors on here. But I definitely want there to be a variety of tones in here. I don't want it to be all the same color. I just picked up some more brown and white as I'm working my way towards this front. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black too so it's not so brown. So this way it's gonna be a little bit more on the grayer side so it doesn't totally compete with her, her um, upper area and her dress or her skin. So I'm adding that bit more gray into it. And I'm not concerned about it, this being perfect at all. The messier it is, the more I'm going to be able to adapt the um, translucent kind of layered look that I'm gonna want with the, with the fabric that I'm putting on. So as I'm doing this, I'm also thinking, oh, it kind of looks like a flower to me. So I'm allowing myself to give it almost like layers of petals and allowing it to have these lighter areas and darker areas. <clears throat> But all the while I'm thinking, I don't want it a solid color. So your color pattern may end up much different looking than mine. Yours might be lighter or darker or have more gray in it or have more brown in it. Whatever happens is okay because we'll be able to manipulate it into the style of um, skirt or a, the skirt with a bunch of movement to it. So I am gonna get it a little bit lighter in these front areas. Um, just so I can start the process of the, um, the front being lighter than the back. So I just added a bit more of the white and brown to my brush just to get a little bit lighter going on in through here. And then once you've got this first layer done, I'm gonna bring it all the way to my, to my chalk mark. Once you've got the first layer done, we are going to be utilizing our um, small brush for the next step. So you can Put your large brush away if you need, need to redo any of your black because you got chalk in it, feel free to do so. Um, and then you can put this brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the spotlight. I know I said I wanted to use my small brush, but I changed my mind. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. <laughs> so how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be using mostly white um, and some water, but I might use a little bit of yellow and or brown, but if I do, I'll let you know. It's probably gonna be mostly white, but just forewarning you in case I change my mind. So how I'm gonna do this is I want this spotlight to be kind of above her, sh kind of between her head and her shoulder. It'll be head and shoulders above the rest, but um, um, so it'll be right between these two and up I would say maybe about two inches away from the top of the, the canvas. I'm going to start with a little bit of white paint on my brush to start the spotlight process with a circular type of um, object. So somewhere in through here. So once I've got it, I'm maybe about a half of an inch to an inch wide by tall. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush in a little bit of water and then I'm gonna tap it off on my paper towel and I'm gonna give this some soft edges. So I'm going to just kind of keep moving it out further and further away from that center. And then what I'm gonna do is I, I'm putting even more water on my brush and I'm going to get this to be really soft and just kind of disappear in the darkness. So when you're doing this with water on your brush, what will happen is it's going to appear lighter and brighter when it's wet. The, when it dries, the translucency, it's going to take on the black from underneath. But when it's wet, you're gonna see the fogginess to it. Um, but know that as it dries, it'll get darker and darker because it's gonna take on the color that's underneath it. But the water within the mixture is what makes it look whiter or lighter when it's wet. So now that I've got it kind of dissipated out left and right, now I'm just gonna kind of keep manipulating it until I have a nice blend going on. You might find that you wanna do this one or two passes, or if you got it too bright, you can certainly add a little bit of black into the equation and just kind of reverse it a little bit. But once you've got it where you want, what I'm gonna do, I think it might be a little bit too light. So I am gonna reverse mine a little bit with a touch of black. I just want my area to be a little bit smaller. So I just put a tiny bit of watered down black on my brush. So this is a great lesson for you guys. You can see how if you wanted it smaller, just add a little bit of watered down black paint to the equation and you can kind of shrink it back up a little bit and just kind of manipulate it until you've got that circumference that you're looking for and have that light just kind of dissipate as it's going away from the center. Gonna put a tiny bit more white on my brush just to get that center area to brighten back up a little bit and then just kind of work it back out. So you can keep reworking it until you feel that you've got that softness around the edges. And then once you've got it in, in this way, then what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna start to pull out my light beams. So I'm gonna be doing that with watered down white paint. So what you can do is you can either just take it on your brush like, I, like I'm gonna do, add a touch of water to it, and then dab it off on your paper towel, and or you can just add a little bit of fluidity or water to directly to your paint. So I washed and dried my brush just to show you what I'm talking about, and I put a little bit of water on it, and I can just thin it out right on my, can right on my palette. So that way, I'm working with a very thinned out paint. You could use liquid medium to thin it out or you could use a little bit of water. And once you've got it into that consistency that you want, you're just gonna kind of take it and just pull it out in however many directions that you would like. I start mine kind of slowly like this where they're not um, really invasive or super bright and then I will work my way to getting them brighter as they go towards the center. But right now just kind of with that watered down um, paint pulling it out in whatever directions that I want. My brush is splaying out a little bit on me so I just reloaded and now that I've got pretty much where I want want them to go, then what I can do is I can start working back from the direct center and kind of brightening up these beams as they are closer to the center of that um, of the light. So I can just kind of keep adding that watered down mixture and making the line shorter and shorter. And what will happen is it's going to make it look like it's getting brighter and brighter as it goes towards that center. And then when you've got those as much as you want, if, if you want to do any additional 
brightness to the center of your light. Just pick up some full white paint and just kind of brighten back up that center as much as you want to. And you can give a, a firm circle or you can have it dissipate, whatever works for you. And then just fiddle with it until it's everything that you had hoped it would be. And then we're gonna be using our small brush. Uh, no, we're gonna use our large brush for the, uh, nope. <laughs> we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. I'm pretty sure of that. So once you've got your light done, um, you can wash and dry this medium brush and just get it ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our skirt. So I'm using my medium brush, but you could clearly tell I was indecisive as to which brush I wanted to use. So you could probably use any brush to do this step. It's wherever your comfort zone is. So what I'm in essence going to be doing is um, adding some highlights over on the side where the spotlight is, making sure that front side of the skirt is really bright and illuminated. And then I'm going to be adding little bits of highlights throughout the rest of the skirt, maybe a couple of additional shadows too. I'm really just looking to add another layer to identify or kind of bring into focus the edges of the these layers of this type of skirt. So I'm just going for an impressionistic type of representation of this skirt. You could certainly have yours a solid type of fabric. You could really make yours into whatever you'd like, but I'm trying to make it have some translucency to it and some volume and some fluff and all that good stuff. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are definitely white. I am gonna use a little bit of yellow as well. And then I'll be using some form of black and brown gray mixtures in, in through the back as I, as I get towards the back of the skirt. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to try and tackle my bright brights on that side of the skirt. So I'm going to be using this light yellow that we had made for um, the, the highlights on the head. So again, that was just a little bit of yellow and some white just to get myself that luminescent light yellow slash um, darker than white kind of color that will help me to really make my white stand out. So I have a little bit of that on my brush right now. I know I want a whole bunch of little bright edges to my um, skirt over as it's touching my body in through here. So just kind of manipulating my brush to look like the skirt is coming right out from the edge of her body somewhere in through here. I am going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I will be using uh, a lot in this step. I like to utilize the water on my brush in order to get these um, layers to talk to one another without overdoing it. I want to see some translucency in the paint so I can see the stuff underneath it. So from a lot of time, what I'm going to do is I, I add the paint on there. Like I'll add my yellowish mixture, my light yellow in through here. Then I'll go and I'll pick up a tiny bit of water on my brush and get it to blend in with the neighboring areas, adding some little ripples here and there to give it that um, that textural type of effect. Maybe I'll have a little piece of the skirt flipping out in through here. Maybe I'll have some of the additional edges over in through here. Now this is a multi-layered kind of skirt, so you can certainly add different um, areas to it as you go along. If I want this area to kind of look like it's flipping over in through here, I can add these directional kind of brush strokes that are going to tell you you have a lump of fabric that is rippling over in this direction, right about where her, her body hits the skirt in through here. This is where I'm going to feel like it's going to be darker back here. So as I am putting my light stuff on, I know that as I come around this corner, I'm going to start to get darker, but I I'm going to be adding my lights first, so I'm just mindful of where I'm going to be stopping with this light color. So right now, just kind of adding some stuff over here on the edges. Just picked up that light yellow color. Going to put maybe some movement in through here. I like it to just kind of all talk together. Maybe we've got some in through here. I am going to be adding a little bit more white on the edges of this um, 
the tippy top edges, but I'm using this light yellow to just kind of give me some movement and some lightness. And as I go through this, again, I'm just going to pick up some water on my brush to give these um, little pieces of translucent fabric. So as I go through this process, that white helps me with this illusion of this fabric being see-through. I can really just kind of um, wiggle in some of these light marks and provided that I give them that translucency and maybe they have a little bright edge to them here and there, it's going to make it look like that particular type of fabric. So maybe a little bit more lightness up and through here. So it, this will definitely transition into this darkness back in through here. I'm going to put some of this light yellow over on this side as well. So maybe I've got myself a nice big area in through here and we've got some ripples over in through here leading their way to the to the body. And again, I'm, I'm using my original footprint that I had for the skirt, but you can certainly add and subtract all you want as you're going through this process because again, this is that type of skirt that just will have so much information in it and some of it will be see-through and you know, it can bend and, and twist in many different ways. I'm gonna bring some of this lightness as it's coming towards the back side of the skirt, but not, not too much, just adding little, little bits of lightness here and there. Still just using that light yellow right now. I will be adding, um, again, some additional white to the, to the front edges in a little bit, but right now just getting this light yellow on here and having these little translucent kind of corners to the skirt really make that look like it is this style of skirt too. So now that I've got that, I think I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint just so I can really just tackle these brights while I'm thinking about it. So just a little bit of white paint is um, going to enhance these tippy top edges. Maybe a couple little pieces in through here. Maybe a nice bright bend in the fabric over here. And again, I'm just in my head saying, okay, these little pieces that bump up are catching the, um, the light from that beautiful spotlight. I'm not doing all of them, just kind of giving these little, these little tips of information here and there and get having them have a lot of movement in them and a lot of, a lot of, um, direction to them and that's looking pretty good to me in through there maybe maybe a little bit more as it hits her body so we can see the shape of her body in through here as well and then what I'm going to do as I'm steering towards the back in through here I don't just want to use white because it wouldn't look like it's in the shadows so I'm going to be using a combination of my white brown and black and you can really use any intensity of this that you want. Um, I will, when it comes to areas that I want to bump out a little bit more, I'll be using a little bit more white on my brush. But my main goal is just to kind of try and get this to look uh, on the ripply side. So I have that color combination on my brush. And if you ever feel like you're, you get yourself into trouble or you feel like it's too much, just add a bit of water to your brush. And again, that's going to help you to, to control or spread that paint out. I want this to kind of look like it's transitioning over into um, the body in through here. And again, any combination, black, brown, white, maybe a little bit of water so it stays on the darker side back in through here. And you can kind of follow your original footprint. So like if I have a light area in through here, I can say, okay, well, that's gonna be, that's gonna be one of my lighter areas. So I'm gonna just take and enhance that and then allow it to kind of fade off into those darker areas that it sits next to. Maybe I, I see this is a light area. I can kind of enhance that a little bit. Maybe give myself a little bit of lightness along the edges to tell the story of those edges kind of popping out a little bit more. I do, again, want this to feel like it is translucent and we've got lots of the, um, the, uh, the fabric that we can see through, but again, I don't want it to um, turn into one solid color. I do feel like I want this a little bit darker in some of these areas. So I just, without washing my brush, 
picked up a little bit of black and where I have some of these darker areas I just am enhancing them a little bit more with some watered down black paint and that because I have the water on my brush and I didn't wash my brush I've got the translucency happening which allows me to just kind of add these additional kind of layers of this fabric and now I mean I've got everything kind of in in its motion of where I want it so now I'm just kind of enhancing if I see a little dark spot and I want it to sink in a little bit further I just add a little bit more of my dark tones onto it if I, I feel like I want a little bit more in in this area so I can just add a little bit more of that darkness and I just kind of keep playing with it until I feel like I've got that um, that layering of those pieces of fabric and I've got the edges of my fabric the way that I want I'm adding some more of the lightness to my edges but I again I don't want to um, make them too light so I think I need to bring a little bit of my gray grayish type of tones in through here get it to all kind of talk together and then what I will most likely do is once I've once I've got it all where I feel like I've got enough information in it I'll probably let it dry for a minute and then come back and see if there's anything else that I want to do to it but right now you can see I'm really just kind of fiddling with it a little bit making sure that I have um, as much lights and darks as I want I still want this back side to remain on the darker side but I do want to make sure that the viewer understands that there's edges to the fabric so if I need to enhance any of my edges like I felt like I should enhance that one I can certainly do so make sure my edges along um, the bottom are nice and crisp and that we've got some um, delineation between them and the and the um, shadow beneath so if you have to you can just kind of manipulate some extra extra fun edges and just bringing up some of those additional translucent type of um, waves and ripples that will help to sell the story of this being that translucent kind of um, skirt and then again just fiddle with it until you feel like you've got it light enough and then we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got your skirt done you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and this is a this is a hard step to stop just for <laughs> you and then once you've got your skirt done you can um, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we're going to be doing for the next step is we are going to be painting ourselves a yellow rose. So of course you can certainly paint your rose whatever color you'd like, but yellow's my favorite, so we're going yellow today. <laughs> I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using yellow. Um, I'm also going to use brown, green, black, and white. So we'll use all the colors on our palette for this step. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to just start with some yellow paint just to put it in place. I'm going to have mine as if she was... Um, has her hands on her lap and one of them is holding the rose so I'm just going to be showing the edge of the rose in through here so I'm going to just start mine with a um, kind of like a horseshoe type of shape something like this with the little edges kind of sticking out I'm going to have a little couple of petals coming like that and then just kind of close off the top maybe maybe this right side I'll just have one something like that so that's going to be my shape of my of my flower just kind of getting it in with some good yellow in through here it doesn't have to be a super perfect um, coat because we're going to be doing all the details on it in a minute while that's kind of um, sitting and and drying a little bit I'm going to do the stem of the flower so I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm picking up some green paint so I'm going to have my stem just coming from the bottom of my flower. I'm doing a green stem and it's just going to kind of disappear behind her. You might have yours in front of your skirt or behind your skirt, wherever the placement works is totally fine. I'm going to have a couple of the um, leaves coming off down towards the bottom. So I'm just going to have them kind of coming off in these directions. I'm going to have um, 
Oops, that's a little bit too much paint on my brush. I'm gonna have maybe one coming up this side and then maybe one off the back. You can have as many of these little cute petals as you want, something like that. I'm going to, while I'm here on the stem, I'm gonna um, wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint to give myself a little bit of um, shadow on the right side of my stem. So just a little bit of black paint on the right side of my stem and maybe at the bottom of some of these petals or in between the petals. You can also put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of your, your flower. So just a little bit of black pulling it up into the flower on that bottom right side will help to um, give a little bit of shadow over on that side as well as in between these um, the leaves at the bottom. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of white and um, yellow paint to give myself a tiny bit of a highlight on my stem. So more white than yellow, but just something to be able to see the shape of that stem and then just kind of adding little bits of highlights on these left um, leaves as if they're being seen by um, the light from above. And then what I'm going to do is I'm wiping my brush, uh, or I washed and dried my brush, and I'm going to start adding little details onto my rose itself. So really what I'm going to be concentrating on is just adding brightness to the edges of the petals that are steering towards the um, spotlight and maybe little hints of them over on this side as well. So I'm gonna first, and, and I need shadows between those, um, between those petals as well. So I'm gonna first pick up a little bit of brown paint on my brush to give myself some little um, shadows between these, uh, what will be the petals. So I'm just kind of stroking my, um, my brush in this diagonal kind of direction to separate some of these petals from the interior. So a rose usually is like, it's, it almost looks like it's a spiral up at the top, and then it just has um, its petals that just kind of encapsulate the sides of it. So I'm really not doing much detail at all. I just am looking to give the impression that this is in fact a rose. So I just put a little bits of brown in through there. I'm washing and drying my brush and now I'm picking up yellow and white at the same time. So it's not that light yellow that we made, but it's yellow and white at the same time. And I'm going to start to add the tips of these petals. So you can just kind of find a find an edge over here and then just kind of pull it towards the, the center. The ones up at the top are going to be more in a curved type of um, formation. So I'm up at the top and I'm just adding these little curves of highlighted yellow paint to give you the illusion that these are being kissed by the by the um, light from above. So just a little bit more over in through here. And I'm feeling like I want a little bit more darkness inside the center of the, or over on this right hand side of the flower. So I'm gonna put a little bit more darkness just so I can have a little bit more contrast in a second here. But first I'm enhancing my, my bright yellow first so I can make sure that I've got that accounted for. So that's looking pretty to me. I'm gonna add a little bit more brown and black on my brush just to give myself a um, little more dimension over here on the right hand side. So brown and black and I'm just kind of pulling in a couple more of the little details of the flower just so we can have a nice dimension, dimensional element to this. And then you can just fiddle with it as much as you want. And then we're gonna be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful flower on here, you can put this small, or at wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I'm gonna sign mine over here in the bottom left. 
I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful dancer and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.